your understanding of European cohesion shall emerge. Um, I will cut things short because uh, we are a little bit late already, but before I introduce the speakers, let me just say how you, our invisible audience, can communicate with us. Uh, we will stop our discussion every 20 minutes or so, maybe a little shorter now for Q&As. And those of you who are watching on Zoom can send their questions to the speakers, um, to the speakers using the Q&A box. And those of you who are watching the live stream can type their questions in the chat and the forum team will pass them on to me. Uh, let me now quickly introduce the panelists. Uh, I start with, well, from my Leo Swinkels. Um, Leo Swinkels is the former Dean of the Maastricht Theatre Academy and president of PLETA, platform of nine European theatre academies that has been founded with the aim of creating new experiences for students when working together as young theatre professionals in Europe. So they form a strong community of practice. Welcome, Leo. Thank you, Regina. Beata Chuchinskaya is a theatrologist and cultural manager. And since 2005, she has been the Academy Chancellor in charge of organizational and economic matters at Alexander Salverovich National Academy of Dramatic Art in Warsaw, Poland. She has managed numerous international projects and festivals at her university. Thank you very much for joining us, Beata. Thank you, Regina. Um, Marty Gaspar, last but not least, cultural manager and <clears throat> university lecturer at the University of Theatre and Film Art, Budapest, Hungary, head of art theory department and senator, and all this <clears throat> formally, we must add here, because Mate just resigned from all his functions. Reason is the forced transformation of the university from a public institution to a private foundation as decreed by the Hungarian government. And Mate <clears throat> still supports the ongoing student strike for academic autonomy and freedom of the arts. And we shall certainly hear more about this during our panel. Um, I'm a- Thank you. Dr thank you, Mate. I'm a, I'm a dramaturg and I'm teaching acting students at the University of Music, Theater and Media in Hanover. Um, and here I also represent a little bit as the general secretary of the EUTSA, this network of 18 international theater schools and academies. We were asked to join the forum, not to present our association, but to use the network to provide expert knowledge for the future challenges in higher education of theater and performing arts. Now, dear panelists, we agreed to start with a personal round and I would like to ask you, why did you start international cooperation in higher theater and performing arts education in the first place? Please try to stay short and concise. And please, Leo, can I ask you to start? Yes, uh, it's a pleasure to start. Um, when I came to Maastricht to become uh, the Dean of the Maastricht Theatre Academy for more than 20 years, it was quite obvious for me that we should look uh, around. And if you look around in the city of Maastricht, you look to the neighbors, which are uh, other countries and other cultures, familiar, but others. Uh, like Belgium uh, with the Flemish and French uh, culture and like Germany. So that was quite obvious. This theater academy in Maastricht had to uh, uh, look out and reach out to his neighbors. One of my guest teachers and good friend and advisor uh, uh, has, uh, was at that time and still is Johan Simons. Johan uh, uh, is an alumnus of the Maastricht Academy, but he started his, uh, at that time, I'm, I'm talking about the, the 90s, his international career, especially in the German speaking uh, uh, areas. And together with Arthur Zonnen, who was at the time uh, director of the, the Dutch International Theatre Festival, they, they created this idea of uh, uh, making of a theatre academy also an international meeting point. 
So we started international conferences uh, and that was on exchange and meeting. And after that, we started the first bilateral cooperation, co-productions with theater academies in the UK, in Germany, and even in Russia, St. Petersburg, on a temporary basis, on a project basis. It was bilateral and it was very interesting and it tasted um, to do more like that because students um, had a good, a, a big benefit of it. And so we tried to make it more structural and not on a project basis with even more partners. And then arose this idea of a platform of European Future Academies, PLATA, to get all together we are eight partners to create multilateral cooperation and co-production because we do believe, and the first results uh, are very interesting about that, that this kind of working together gives the biggest results in, um, in, 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 in skills, in competences, and especially in multicultural, multilingual uh, possibilities for our young theater makers, which is the basis for theater in the future. Maybe we could have a quick view, Regina, on, on uh, one of the uh, projects, very short yes. video, yeah? yes. about a project with refugees, about the refugee team. Okay. Uh, that we made in 2016 with all our Plata partners. Uh, Juna, could you be so kind to start the Odyssey clip? Yes, thanks. It's just like this open things that you can, when you know it's about refugees, when you know it's about the, the Odyssey, you you have enough room to build your own story, I think. And that's, and that's a cool thing about it. We moesten op een of andere manier iets verzinnen, waardoor alle scholen iedere keer bij elk project betrokken waren. And it's also in this project, the audience are the fugitives. So they come and see all the aisles. And of course they don't understand you, as all fugitives come on the Greek shore. Do you think they speak Greek? Nobody does, but they do understand each other. Okay, any questions? No questions? Okay, we hand out the programs and then... Give me the programs. Have a great week. Have a great week. Let's form two lines on both sides of the road. During our performance, you, the member of the audience, shall be addressed. Uh, I'm Jakob, um, uh, studying in Munich. I'm Tim, I'm one of the students of Ritz. My name is Isabel and I'm from Norway. I'm studying in Oslo. Hello, I'm Jenny, I'm from this kind of a stuff. Like a piece of curious theater, if I may refer to Goran's wonderful, wonderful speech. People just meeting, not knowing what will be the outcome of what they are going of what they are going to create together or to communicate in the, in the first place.
Thank you very much. I would like to pass on to Beata. Uh, what was your reason to start with international cooperation? Thank you, Regina. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm, I'm really honored to be here um, at this forum. So if this is about personal approach, it will be about personal approach. Uh, I'm from Poland, so I was born and, uh, and raised in a communist country and everything, the beginning and everything is on this axis, the Western and Eastern European, Europe. Poland joined uh, European Union in 2004 and it was uh, more or less the same time when I went to Brussels first time. I was a representative of the inter-artist thematic, uh, thematic network uh, into the frameworks of uh, Socrates, uh, Socrates uh, program. And uh, my academy was an institutional coordinator of this thematic network. And that was the meeting full of contrast. Uh, first, I was the only person represent the, representing the thematic network from the former communist country and probably the first Polish citizen in this group. Uh, I was young, uh, 28 years old lady in front of a noble middle-aged man, mostly professors. Uh, all of them represented uh, serious sciences of humanities and I was representing arts. Uh, to be honest, there was one uh, music uh, thematic network, uh, but still that was a huge confrontation and that was, uh, that was their lesson. Uh, but that was also the meeting when I first time saw how the culture politics are made and that the worlds are followed by real activities and that there are real possibilities to cause the change. People there in the European Union offices were really helpful and friendly. In the meantime, I have visited uh, Brussels uh, many times as we still don't have Euro. So uh, Western countries are still relatively expensive to us. And I was looking for the cheapest hotels and walking uh, the city on my foot with a small suitcase. And I was surprised that uh, not every salesman in the shop and not every waiter is nice to me. And I was thinking, what am I doing wrong? And my Dutch friend explained me that uh, lots of Brazil citizens do not accept us EU, EU visitors with those small suitcases. And I saw this scratch and uh, maybe I could read about it somewhere in newspaper, but I felt it. And I understood that this feeling is uh, one of the most uh, 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 elements of understanding the processes of European processes. And that was, that this is the first reason I'm working on this. Just, I, I think the feeling is very important. During my work, I, always, I was also traveling a lot of, uh, in a, for, for different festivals. And uh, I was uh, visiting its festival in Amsterdam or uh, ACT festival in Bilbao. I was in Sarajevo in Rome. And I remember that at the very beginning, I rejected the art uh, presented by young artists uh, on the festivals, in the Western festivals, this Western uh, performing arts, let's say. And it took me some years uh, to understand that this is not a bad art. This is just another language. This is another sensitivity. This is another culture context and another audience. And I remember long talks with our students who at the very beginning also had this problem with the reception of this uh, uh, artistic language of their friends. From, from the West, let's say, in, in general. Uh, so uh, that's the other reason. Uh, the experiencing of different cultural contexts really have this experience. Um, I think today is even more important than it was before uh, because we are convinced that we know something about other cultures because the internet, social media, movies, um, TV series, which say everything, but it's smoking. And uh, I think if we really want to understand each other, we really need to experience each other. And this is the third element I would, read, I would like to say during the It's Festival, which Alexander Zerberovic State Theatre Academy organizes since 2002. Uh, uh, once edition, uh, we invited uh, two groups, one from Israel and the second from Iran. And we are really afraid how to deal with those groups, not to cause any uh, accident by, by chance between those groups uh, because they were, of course, in conflict. And uh, the a tradition of our festival is that uh, uh, one day all the representatives of all the schools are sitting at the round table and talking one to another about the schools, methodologies, artistic uh, uh, challenges. Uh, so we also um, 
uh, arrange such, such meeting with all the representatives and the representatives from Iran and Israel, they said uh, face to face at the same table and said to us that they, they were really happy to be there as a human to human, uh, talk with each other, just a normal, just without any political conflict or whatever. The conflict was all about their heads. And that was so touching and convinced me that uh, all the efforts you make to organize this meeting between people is that war. Uh, so this is my personal, very personal approach. And that's why I'm working on developing international cooperations for my students. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Beata. Um, that's what festivals can do. We might later on speak about um, what is not be able to be managed by festivals alone, but uh, we have to take other methods. Now I switch to Mate, please, to your personal statement. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, actually, my experience is, is quite close to uh, that, as uh, since I'm also coming from a Central Eastern European country, Hungary, where I was born and I, where I, I live. Uh, I was privileged, although, to uh, start my professional career at the turn of the century as the managing director of a young independent theater company called Kretaker, which was led by Arpa Schilling. And uh, we had uh, um, a fantastic uh, period of some 10 years where we could develop and, uh, and nurture a fantastic international network of co-producers and presenters and therefore we had the chance to travel all around Europe and even beyond uh, which not only allowed uh, to us uh, to to develop a, an operational model which was unique at that time in Hungary and which led me to the university to the academy uh, world uh, to reflect on and, and, and teach about but also uh, opened a a fully different perspective for us as young theater makers and um, and later on um, thinkers uh, on on those uh, very important issues of international cooperations what can work and and how and of course i it's useless to tell you that uh, uh, some 20 years ago the situation was completely different and when you came from uh, a post-communist country. <clears throat> this was uh, something uh, really inspiring and uh, and interesting for Western partners. Therefore, the, the the models, the cooperation models, worked on a very different pattern than it, it is now. Uh, meaning that that we still we were still considered as as, as artist uh, professionals coming from the so-called margin. So we should be somehow uh, uh, integrated or reintegrated in our common European culture and uh, for that purpose many very generous and, and, and forward-looking programs were also initiated and, and maintained by the by the Western uh, um, bodies and, and organizations which also somehow raised the question whether we are how much we are dependent on that kind of cooperation scheme and very early on it was uh, uh, it was a big topic for us how to how to get to an equal level and how to create real partnerships based on mutual understanding and exchange and real share of resources and experiences. Um, and uh, it was uh, so, it was uh, uh, well, as, as long as it was a professional uh, inquiry and the professional debate, I think it was very healthy, but when it moved also to the political level, uh, which after the, the, the uh, joining uh, of the European Union uh, at the same time, 2004, and more explicitly after the, the uh, coming to the power of the new Orban regime in, after 2010, this position is, was even uh, somehow at the political level and the cultural policy level also counterbalanced. And now these countries in the former East or former Central East uh, behave and claim as a sort of superiority who, who are best positioned to know what true European and true national based uh, European Christian culture is about and tries to uh, preach about it and, and make lessons to Western countries which are now considered as uh, uh, declining and uh, losing uh, their parts. So it's very, very uh, frightening and also very insightful to, to look at all those uh, major moves 
and it's when it comes to culture, it's uh, it's, it's we are really touching the, the the heart of it. And of course, it very much uh, relates to the to the possibilities of um, corporations and uh, and international ex exchanges. My experience as a university teacher, uh, which dates now uh, almost fifteen years back, uh, that that. Uh, despite of all these uh, programs and, and, and European reunification, uh, students in local uh, uh, schools remain quite closed and, and quite um, um, cut off uh, the, the meaningful and, and, and really uh, mind the changing uh, European cooperation. So there is a, a lot to do. And this was also one of my uh, priorities as a, as a university staff member to open up new ways of co cooperations and, and as, uh, as in that as case also uh, a festival experience uh, went into that direction that, that we uh, also we've been running. But I think that uh, first of all, for, for any kind of um, uh, meaningful uh, cooperation to, to happen, uh, there, is a, there is a real precondition and is it really to, to, to be on, on the same platform? So when it comes to, to, uh, to educational, institutions when it comes to universities and when when we when we are exploring what kind of cooperation scheme can be set up uh, uh, one the, the the top precondition is to to be placed on the same basic uh, uh, value set and, uh, and 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 be not only uh, instinctively but outspokenly also agree on on some basic values like the the, the autonomy of those universities who are supposed to to, to cooperate and this autonomy uh, is also related uh, both at the academic both at the organizational and also at the political level and therefore um, the, the current situation is Budapest is, is 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 on the one hand highly problematic and on the other hand very much uh, uh, um, full of lessons for uh, for for the European family of, of of artists and 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 academics because the very basics of these um, these, these values are uh, seriously attacked by the by the government and uh, are fiercely uh, defended by the students. So just a, a little illustration uh, on that a, a short uh, clip uh, that uh, the you know, you can. Uh, launch and maybe I will just uh, uh, explain while while you are watching the uh, this uh, this very short clip to to explain what is it about. Um, it's uh, it's from a yeah yeah I, I, can you can you hear me or just the music? <laughs> okay, so it it happened uh, two months ago. It was early September. Where, when the carta that we wrote with all the university values, this piece of paper was uh, transmitted hand by hand from the university's building until the parliament. And it was a huge festival, sort of uh, uh, improvised uh, feast throughout the streets of Budapest with uh, tens of. I think you have to explain later. Too loud for my feeling. Moment, just let the clip go and then. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you, but it would have been to, you can do either watch the video yeah, or sure, yeah, sure, sure. the explanation. Okay, so, so maybe you, you just, yeah, tell okay. us what we saw. So, so you, what you could see that uh, it, this, this carta uh, with, the, the, with the description of, uh, of the autonomy of, 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 of the university or the, of the universitas in, in general. And uh, these this claims and this uh, uh, basic value set was uh, 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 transmitted from one hand to the other throughout the streets of, of Budapest from the university's building until the parliament building. And uh, tens of thousands of people joined this uh, improvised uh, um, uh, public feast uh, and, and, uh, and, and helped students to, to, to make it very 
performative uh, what what they mean by uh, by autonomy what they mean by defending the the universal values that that are that that should be european and which are currently under serious attacks this recording is from september early september and many many things uh, happened uh, yet and unfortunately not in the good direction but we we can talk about it later thank you yeah maybe we can talk about this later thank you thank you very much um, I have got, normally I would stop now for some Q and A's, but we haven't got any um, yet. Um, I suppose everybody is just following your very thrilling descriptions of, um, of, your, of your personal reasons, which I can very much understand and, un and underline. I mean, we're, we are like more or less two generations sitting here being socialized like Leo and me in the last decades of the of the 20th century, you know, where this overwhelming feeling of opening, opening up international cooperation and culture as one of the major means of transport of sort of an exchange about, about, about cultural um, identity. And, and this, uh, this word has gotten a strange taste by now. This is why I wanted to, I'm, I'm using that, I wanted to, to, to say that I personally very much like a, um, a shift of terms the French uh, philosopher Francois Julien proposes because he says um, we should not use the word cultural identity anymore because it gets the notion of uh, nationalistic thought and it goes into an area we do not want to find ourselves again, just as it is happening now outspokenly in, 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 in Budapest. It's almost a folkish idea behind it. And, he, he, and he, he said, let's replace it by the term cultural resource. It's a little technical, but what it means, and this is important for the students, I believe, that a cultural resource is just what you have and can bring with you as material into each encounter and each its exchange. It's not your identity, it's not your national identity, it's just your luggage, your cultural luggage you can, you can, you can take with you. And he also said, let's not use the term um, uh, cultural difference anymore. We worked with these terms very much, but uh, now we should, um, we should not use them anymore and rather say, um, just say distance. We're separated by distance and not by difference. So also this again is just a geographical uh, gap you can overcome when you travel and meet other people and full stop to this. So I, I would really um, like to, to, to ask you, starting with this, um, what do you think are the challenges we meet now um, and we face now, if we want to establish a European basis for social dimensions in our métier, in the arts, and why does this have to start in uh, education from your experiences? Yes, Leo, please. You have to unmute yourself, Leo. You have to unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you very much. In, in in addition to, to this idea of, of resources, we, 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 uh, we had in the Plata platform this uh, concept of treasures. Mm -hmm. uh, all, every academy uh, Beata, uh, will, will, uh, has a very good example for that because of her Grudowski heritage and workshops. Uh, nearly every academy has its own treasures, which is very beautiful to share because then you can uh, share uh, experiences and uh, um, yeah, more or less attach it knowledge to other academies without uh, uh, restricting yourself to this treasure as, as uh, something like your own identity, which is the most uh, beautiful that, uh, that there is in the world. And so it gives uh, uh, lots of opportunities for um, uh, co-creating uh, between uh, universities and academies to share those treasures so you have a good look at your own more or less cultural tradition and in the same time you make it as a very positive starting point for exchange and co-creating. Besides that we have to 
to to to um, um, to understand that our national heritage are uh, very young because uh, our national uh, states are not existing longer than a couple of ages and before that it was a quite another and, and uh, situation even in Europe with with a lot of uh, uh, integration processes and and moving processes uh, during all the ages we, we have been so there there's much more we have in common than that we should uh, different from each other I think that's that's a more historical view but I think we shouldn't forget that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Leo. But uh, what um, what about the others? About the yes, Beata, about the challenges we meet today. Uh, I, I would like to uh, uh, make one step back to what you said, uh, Regina, about uh, about those two generations. And from my point of view, and I think Martin may say the same. Uh, that uh, as we were born in a close countries and we were raised in a close countries and then uh, the countries opened so so wide and we could experience the, oh, this openness and uh, uh, develop some tools to make cooperation and now we are witnessing uh, a kind of closing again borders mental borders and even physical borders because uh, of the pandemic but not only the the, the, pan, the pandemic is, is not the only reason of this closure so i think that uh, this this is the process um uh, i i really feel a lot of uh, uh, regret in myself that this uh, uh, we are going to, to close uh, uh, our countries again and our minds again and about what uh, uh, what leah said about what are the perspectives now and what uh, shall we do? Uh, I think that uh, this uh, uh, PLETA project, uh, which uh, was really focused on sharing the, uh, uh, the resources of the academies was really worth. And uh, we can show, for example, if Duna, may, may you uh, show this uh, uh, Grotowski workshop that was clipped too, maybe for a moment. Yes, we can, we have the time. No, Juna is looking for the, yeah, thank you. Um, we have been walking silently hours in the forest together. Just walking and just be in your own time and own rhythm, just passing the space and we could be really the part of the nature. Simplicity without any big uh, philosophy just to open your mind and be here and now okay do the try the tempo of everything is two, two three times quicker, stronger. The, everything is running and rushing. Uh, we are thinking that the tools we have will be helpful to have more time for ourselves. But the tools we have, they are taking our time. Time that we can take about ourselves. I think that instinct of the human being is enough strong that the people know there is kind of uh, very dangerous process of losing completely contact with the real life. Young people now, they more and more, they are in the virtual reality. And very often happens that young people they feel lost in the real reality, in the real life. They absolutely prefer to be there because they could control and they are lost here. Check your construction. Massage your ears. In your neck. Feel the skin. Feel the shoulder blades, how they work. And one, two, three. And one, two. 
use the theater like the place for self-development, like the, uh, the place that they will recognize for what the life is. It's not for make the fantastic big show. The theater for me is the place where that you should know what it means human being. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beata, for, for sharing this. This was a Grotowski workshop uh, uh, you gave in, in Warsaw, and there were international students joining in, getting to know the method of, you know, one of the methods of Grotowski, right? Yeah, that was uh, that was the workshop. It was not in Warsaw. We organized it, but mm -hmm. it was in Brzezinka near Wrocław. That was mm -hmm. the original place where Grotowski was working. What is interesting about this workshop that uh, the students were there uh, uh, in a group of uh, more or less 24 persons, I think. They had to care about everything. They had to care about their water, their, uh, uh, their food, uh, cleaning uh, the venue and everything. And even if they had the problem with the uh, uh, energy, they had to go through the field and uh, just to solve the problem. So it was real, uh, a real experiencing the life. But what I would like to stress is what Tomasz Rodowicz said in this, uh, in this movie, that uh, what our challenge now is uh, to, to, to find for the students a place for self-development. Uh, using all those resources we have and dealing with all those resources we have as the academies and uh, the cultures. Mm -hmm. You said in the thank you. You, you said when we when we when we first spoke, all other. I mean, we're speaking of higher higher ed, uh, education and of universities, which is strange enough that art should be you know taught at universities, but it's it's good. And you said, Beata, I remember very well. All other sciences. Um, have included uh, uh, the necessity to think about what you're doing, to reflect what you're doing. Whereas people who are doing performing arts always act, 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 act. They're always doing, they're always doing. And, and, and the curricula give uh, very, very little room for, for this, what in, in a certain extreme you are doing in this Grotowski workshop philosophy. And I also reflect back to what Goran said this, this morning, this really also is uh, again an anti-Cartesian <laughs> measure <laughs> of doing theater together and experience and experiencing each other. So, like we are, we are in the middle of the topic now because all this international exchange is something which is more and more done on festivals. There are a lot of uh, possibilities to do co-productions. Many of them are fostered by um, EU uh, programs you can apply for. Uh, but our issue is, why should we start with students at the, uni at the university? And what can we do, um, what can we do uh, uh, in our universities to make this happen more? Because if we wait for the students to go out into whatever theater, film, whatever they are doing, um, it's sometimes too late to even make this experience because you're on the market and you and you and you and you have and you have to run. Now we have a very elaborate system of trainings in Europe and every theater in every theater school I meet uh, sort of more or less outspoken the conviction our education is the best. Our program to train artists is the best. We have the best method for whatever kind of theater. Um, uh, and this is not exactly a spirit that's fostering international collaboration between the institutions themselves. I mean, Erasmus is fine. You can go and have your experience, uh, but uh, we are talking about something different here, aren't we? Who wants to? Yeah, Leo, please. Yes, yes, I think that's a very important um, uh, aspect of uh, co-creation. You have to open up to the other uh, universities, academies, and that starts with at least being very curious about what the others are doing and how they do it, and uh, to be as open as possible to, to discover values they uh, can provide for your own students. 
And so you have to leave the comfort zone as, as a dean or as, as professors at, at your academy that, that what you are doing is the best for your students. So you have to come out of your own comfort zone, which is not, not that easy as it sounds because we all, uh, I do think we all in the academies have a very strong um, um, uh, engagement with our students and really uh, try to make uh, the best pro program we can. So we really do believe in, in, the, in the values of our program. So to step a little bit aside of your own beliefs is, is not that easy as it sounds, but you have to do that to create space for real uh, co-creation and interaction with other uh, um, uh, point of views, with other um, uh, forms of training, and even we have to leave the comfort zone that what what the professors, the teachers are proposing is the best way and gives the best results. We have even to open up to give the space to the students themselves to create in a more autonomous way than we are used to, I think, in our educational programs. So in my opinion, the, the, the learning outcomes of our programs are for more than 50% in the hands of the students themselves and what they learn from each other uh, in a kind of peer group learning. Um, and we should create the circumstances uh, uh, that they can benefit of that approach and even more that they can benefit if they go out their comfort zone themselves, if they go step into such kind of international co-creating groups because they become a, a creative community themselves at that moment. So that, that is not as easy as it sounds it, it, uh, it will take a lot of uh, um, uh, wise uh, coaching and, and facilitating from, uh, from our academies, from our uh, teachers to, uh, to realize that. But I have a very strong belief and, and the first experiences in Plata uh, are very promising that the learning outcomes of such kind of projects are very high for the students themselves. I'm sure Martin the, yeah, has to yeah, say something I, about this. <laughs> yes, of if, course, if I would have given you the word. Yeah, I, I'm happy to elaborate on, on, on that because uh, you're absolutely uh, right, Leo. That this is a uh, this is a methodology. It's it's a it's a it's a methodological approach that should be consciously uh, um, developed uh, within the universities and uh, among or between universities when it comes to international cooperation uh, and. Uh, Yes, uh, it is so, and, and this is what we could experience with this uh, uh, very uh, unexpected and, uh, and, and, and randomly uh, happening uh, 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 series of performances that we call the, the Free Republic of Learning, uh, which takes place now in, in, in Budapest for, for more than 70 days now. Uh, actually, it, 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 it has finished uh, or it finished uh, yesterday because of the pandemic regulations. Uh, students were forced to leave the building. So the physical uh, blockade of the building and this uh, very impressive outreach program that they've been developing for more than two months. Now it's temporarily over and it all moves again on the digital uh, era. And we will see what it, what, what it will, uh, 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 what kind of results it will uh, give. But while uh, it was possible to be in the physical space and uh, in an absolutely extra curricular uh, setting, they could uh, meet each other and, and work uh, with each other uh, more intensively and more uh, cross uh, disciplinary than it could have been ever planned consciously by by the departments uh, and by by any kind of festival setting or internal uh, uh, project weeks or whatsoever that we, we experience so far uh, the results are just uh, blown, uh, mind blowing I, I can say it's it, and it's not just mind blowing for for the citizens of the university but it's also uh, such for the for the general audience and and the and the lessons uh, go 
far beyond the, the, the actual walls of the institutions. It, it, it penetrates deeply the conscious of the whole society, which, uh, which uh, follows closely uh, what is going on in that kind of uh, free republic of, 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 of learning. And this freedom is really crucial in, in times where, for different reasons, actually spaces are closing down, as, 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 as Beata rightfully said. And this is on the one hand a fact that we have to deal with, but on the other hand, these are uh, uh, manipulated moves from certain political um, um, tendencies that we have to be aware of and, and, and have to uh, seriously counter. And that's why this, this whole um, uh, experience of, of our students uh, uh, is so important and maybe can also show as an example because as in the research uh, processes in, in, in general you try you try you try and by chance somehow uh, sometimes you you find a, a good solution which then will be uh, methodologically observed and 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 and, and uh, scientifically elaborated so that's why I I'm, I'm happy uh, to, to be here and, and to report uh, about that, yes, we, we started our, our school year unexpectedly in a very uh, uh, extra situation which never happened before, but, the, but the, the, the results are absolutely going on that direction that you are also uh, mentioning, uh, Leo, and, and which in a happy time uh, should be somehow reinstalled and inbuilt in uh, the, the formal educational uh, philosophy and, and setting. And yes, Beata, you are very right, uh, and, 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 and Regina also, that, that it can only happen if performance and reflection are present at the same time, and, and, and the results of the reflective process are clearly communicated in, uh, in, in, in different uh, channels, because these things like cooperation and, uh, and outreach doesn't happen just uh, by, by itself, it, it has to be prepared and have to be uh, enacted and explain that yes, we are doing that and, and we do that in purpose. So if, uh, if I may just uh, to uh, a one minute long uh, clip, uh, if uh, Juno, you can, you can show a very, uh, again, a very powerful example of that, how the idea of the solidarity reaching out to five countryside universities in Hungary was prepared by our students and enacted in the form of a, a ultra marathon course, which started from our building and reached out to five different university cities where local university students um, waited for the flame of, uh, of, of, of autonomy and celebrated it. So just one minute. Okay, thank you very much for this impressive example <laughs> of what your students are inventing and uh, their strike and they're really like infecting many other groups, no? Who, uh, it's, it's like we know this from historical examples that the, the arts, very often the arts, start to 
start to make a political protest with their means and their, their, their facilities in order to, to wake up the country or in order to formulate the autonomy of not only of the arts, but of, uh, of, of human beings. And if I understood rightly for all those who are watching us and didn't follow very closely the events in Budapest, um, it's, it's all about um, not being sacked by economy and by um, private consortiums taking over for public, like public resources. You know, we're all used that universities, hospitals and all these things are public goods and now they turn into private, 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 private economies. Um, and universities should be the last, uh, should really be the last to do this, or we should have public, uh, public universities, not only private ones. Um, I'm going back to, I'm going back to what you said, you all said before this um, torch run, uh, we were talking about changing something in our way to teach. Um, I mean, ultimately, we will have to speak in this session about why should there be any European action in this field? Why don't university do themselves what they find necessary to do on the national and international cooperation level? But, but the first thing I want to stress is that this has to do with freeing the curriculum. In our times, to do less and live more space and take input, 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 input out to get some more space is a very unusual thing to do. And universities, especially since Bologna, are under the stress of giving input to their students and not let this kind of free development happen. Do you have a vision on how this could work? I know in Plata you tried it, but, but we are talking about not only a short-term experiment, but we're talking about something substantial, which should change in arts universities in times to come, no? Yes, uh, maybe, maybe I can try, yeah. But uh, I, I do think free the curriculum is important to make space for uh, more autonomous learning by, by student uh, collectives. Uh, but that's, that's not an easy way to do. It takes, uh, it's a long-term policy. You have to build up together with, with, with your uh, uh, staff at the universities, at the, at the theater academies. So it's not, it's 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 a, a matter of building up um, confidence with uh, a curriculum that is not completely uh, uh, explicit, uh, filled with uh, uh, materials, lessons, training programs we know about already. So you have to open up to experiment. We don't know about already what will come out. And that's, that is necessary as well, that it takes uh, quite a lot of uh, a period, a period of time to do so step by step, you know, because you don't want to lose uh, um, those things that, that uh, have proven quality, you know, and that's what you men mentioned already, Regina. We, we are all more or less proud about the quality of our alumni who have uh, a brilliant, uh, uh, well, lots of them, a brilliant uh, performances in, in the professional practices, you know. So we, we are more or less very close connect to our uh, nation wide uh, professional practices. So on that level, we have to um, uh, show some courage uh, in, uh, to, to open up the, the, the highway from educational system to the professional practices, which is known and more or less defined. And you have step to, uh, to, to take courage together with your students to step aside, to go a more autonomous way and to find out maybe the theater of tomorrow, future theater. So that's that's looks like um, 
somehow even a danger for the future of your students because they also want to come into the system, we all know, okay? uh, theater, uh, the movies, uh, television, and uh, we all um, wish them to become more uh, successful uh, in, in their profession with their uh, beloved ambition. They work very hard for that. So it's it's not not an easy thing. Something like yeah, you, you have to skip uh, thirty percent of your curriculum, and you can do that if you want to. No, it's a very uh, a precious thing to do, and I think you you should take time for that. Do it step by step, but you only can do that if you have the interest of the students themselves, because otherwise you, we should make the same. Um, um, yeah, install the same system again that we as as the management as the policy makers of a theater uh, education decide that we should do so no you we should do that together with the students and find their interest in in these uh, so-called um, uh, open area uh, and to step aside but that's one beata i know i give you the word in a second it's just leo what you say stresses the necessity to make experiments you don't know the outcome of and, yeah, and to, and to, and to, and to do right. this and to do this and to do this uh, not only in your country i'm always have an eye on the on the on the european level because um, there is uh, there is not a better way to reflect on yourself or feel you know resources you have treasures you have then uh, then in the um, then uh, then meeting the other and the outcome is not not clear at all and and we have to of course we have to realize that other than in other sciences or in studies um, st students of performing arts are at the same time creators and the instrument and the materials they create with this is true for actors but also for musicians and for all the others so so they they this would be a possibility to free the curriculum because you are doing it together with others, which because they are the others bring in some new aspects and uh, and keep you from knowing beforehand what you want, what you want to achieve, if I may put it this technically. Beata, please forgive me for going in. No, of course, because it's a vivid discussion. So it's, uh, well, it, uh, it's difficult to add something to what you said, uh, Leo, uh, because uh, I think that you just said what I would like to say. Um, uh, what I would like to add is uh, uh, that uh, when I'm thinking about, uh, because we, we, are, uh, we have this tool as Erasmus is, and uh, the students, of course, are uh, using this, uh, this tool, and even this, uh, uh, we are trying to have some join master degrees uh, but uh, uh, my thing is uh, that uh, Erasmus is not enough for artists because one or two semesters or, or, or two semesters of exchange is not uh, is not enough it's not sufficient for them to 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 really have this uh, self-development as we are thinking about young artists who are looking for their own uh, uh, their own way and who, who are also looking for their own research and this is what we also don't have enough space in our curricula to, uh, to, to, to allow them to make their own research and to explore their own fields because we are all the time thinking about competences, skills and social skills they should have from, from our uh, curricula which are uh, really uh, 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 structured. Uh, my uh, my guess is, and my think is that uh, even the festivals is not enough because the festival, as uh, my experience is, when we organize itself festival and we really wanted all the groups to be together for one week and we uh, uh, were organizing funds for this, that the students are here for one week, the full week, and they can see each other and they can talk about the, uh, to talk together and maybe, maybe construct so, so uh, collaboration. As far as I know, it didn't happen so far so this week is not enough they can see each other they can discuss about it but then they are going to their own words and are doing the same as they did more or less uh, uh, when i was thinking about this uh, uh, what what what, uh, what is uh, clear for me that as erasmus is a stable program and it's a stable structure long lasting as we know how it works it would be good to find a long lasting with long perspective program 
for artists, performing artists, which are also stable and where they have, apart from what you said, Leo, this uh, free the curricula, they have a stable conditions for making the research and really looking for what you said, the results we don't know. Um, I have uh, uh, maybe one example, which is maybe quite close to it. Uh, uh, one of our students, uh, uh, of my student, former student, and I will even uh, tell this is Alicia Borkowska, which is important. Uh, when she was a student of theater department in Warsaw, she uh, asked me to go to uh, Bologna University uh, within the uh, uh, Erasmus uh, uh, program. So she spent one semester there and then asked for another one and spent one year there. And then she decided to stay in Bologna uh, and she was there for five years and she came back in 2012 and then she was working with refugees and immigrants and she saw this Lampedusa crisis herself and everything. And she was developing this program and she was developing her professional tools on this field of research that was her field of research when she came back to Poland she started to work on this field of research in Poland, which is absolutely something um, marginal let's say and nobody was uh, talking widely about immigrant crisis, which came two uh, three years later. And uh, then I saw that her research she made, just one individual artist, and then she came to Poland and made a big, uh, I would say, a big discussion about it. And now she's one of the experts on this field here in Poland, and she's adapting all those tools here for our uh, issues uh, uh, concerning the, uh, the immigrants. So that's sometimes it's very individual, and we have to agree with this, that it won't be for everyone. It should be for individuals, but those individuals might create something bigger later. And if I may add, uh, uh, theater and performing arts is always about sharing experience to a third, to an audience. So this is why we, I mean, this is, maybe it's silly to say because all of us who are attending these three days, but, but, but we tend to forget about it, that we are sort of like the basic transformation tool of, of experience and of empathy uh, ever, um, uh, whatever we do, yeah. Thank you, Beata, because, because the experiences we all have, I believe is, and this is why we are thinking so hard about developing openings and collaborations on the long term, the students won't get the idea themselves while they are packed into our curricula. And many of them also during EUTSA meetings said, give us the spark and then we can go on. But you have to give us the spark, the inspiring spark, the one experience of coming together and doing something we would have never experienced before. The one guy said it in the Odyssey video, Leo, we, we heard mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, never done anything like this. What is this? This is very strange. And then they will connect and then it will go on. But it's our responsibility uh, to really do so and do it not as an add on. That's my point. Mate, I'm sure you're longing to say something. You have been silent for a long while. <laughs> I was just uh, checking. Uh, someone wanted to intervene from the attendees. I don't know ah. if it. I, I just saw a, a hand uh, raised, but maybe it's over. No, that somebody. Uh, they, uh, some, sometimes you see things we can't see, and they belong to another session. If there are questions, they would uh, give okay. it to me on what via WhatsApp, okay, or the good. attendees would <clears throat> just walk into our yeah. session. I believe. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. I'm uh, I'm 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 a bit uh, even a bit more critical on uh, on the institutional responsibility of, of, of all that because our institutions, which are of course uh, very much rooted in the tradition and, and and seeking for the highest quality of outputs, uh, um, uh, created a sort of structure which is. Uh, uh, which is uh, very uh, self-sufficient, I would say, and uh, and and self-sufficient from a from a, an, an artistic and pedagogical uh, point of view, and it's already a good case if the if these two two point of views are uh, organically uh, merged. Uh, but then, yes, the question where 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 is the room for for the for the uh, for the inspiration or, or for the aspirations of uh, of those uh, youngsters who are uh, somehow uh, becoming uh, younger and younger, and uh, I, I mean uh, uh, even more different uh, uh, 
by education, by social background, by by uh, by experiences in the in the digital and, and non non digital world. So I think that there is an increasing gap uh, between uh, what what an institution rooted in the tradition might offer, even with the the best intentions, and the reality, the experience, and the aspirations of of, of young people coming into those institutions. So therefore, I think it's really crucial to to uh, uh, re reevaluate our uh, our, our, our routines and, and, and find ways to, um, to, to, to give more place for, for, for those people. And, and therefore it's also, I think, uh, quite important and it's the, also the responsibility of the institutions to, uh, to realize the, the context and to, to acknowledge those, uh, um, those potential partners and platforms of learning uh, which are around, but not are, but which are not institutionalized, and I think it's 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 also um, uh, it, it can be a good way to to um, to somehow emancipate those uh, those existing circles, artistic circles, uh, ped pedagogical circles, uh, initiatives that are uh, that that work for the same purposes, but by nature, by organizational uh, uh, characteristics. Are more adapted to uh, to host those kind of experiences, which can be as as bad at all uh, individual or, or 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 relating to to small groups of uh, uh, of, uh, of of future artists uh, uh, without uh, involving the whole institutional mm -hmm. uh, uh, staff. And mm -hmm. I and I would suggest also that these kind of uh, inspirations, which are which are manifold, so the, we, we we all know a, a bunch of good practices of that kind uh, in in our respective fields uh, should be also recognized on the European level, and 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 I always have the the feeling when when big institutions uh, work together or try to work together, these are like big uh, you know elephants trying to to share the space in the zoo uh, and not to hurt each other and uh, you know. Uh, I, I think that we also should um, uh, should allow the, the European framework of, of cooperation uh, should be more multi-layered and, uh, and, and should offer a substantial cooperation between uh, partners coming from uh, different sectors like the civil, civil sector, the youth sector, uh, the, the cultural sector, the social sector, and, 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 and promote cooperation uh, among them and with existing universities uh, who have definitely mm -hmm. the biggest uh, resources and background for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this, Mate. Uh, I must correct myself. It was Barbara Gessler who was trying to send us a message in the Q&A session. Sorry, Barbara. Um, it was hidden behind some kind of uh, thing I, I, don't, I don't need. Barbara Gessler wrote before Mate spoke, uh, we have an individual mobility tool at EU level, iPortunus, that is for culture professionals. And we are in the process of setting up a circulation of performing arts platform next to Erasmus. But Erasmus means the, remains the go-to instruments for students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for sharing this with us, Barbara. We are hopefully looking for all the new ideas and inventions you are continuously working on um, uh, and always proposing new things. Um, yes, mm, we have no questions either. We are alone in, this, in the spheres or people are just, which I think people are just uh, listening to what we have to say because we are not really quarreling about, no, no other questions, uh, about anything, but rather expanding what, uh, what we have experienced and, um, and, talk, and talk about our, our professions. Um, I would like to suggest that we share a couple of ideas we might have for the future of our institutions. Um, Mate, you were already close to sketching like co-works between institutionalized and non-institutionalized uh, entities, if I, if I understood you right. Um, uh, maybe one of you two, Leo or Beata, want to propose things? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, 
Well, well, maybe it's 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 a good thing, and and uh, I don't know um, if it's aligned with your idea, but um, we should think and maybe propose something like two or three international production houses for graduated students who have the possibility to come together in 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 uh, international. Uh, uh, co-production uh, platforms to find out their way uh, for maybe a new kind of theater for the future and maybe also which is as important as well Regina you mentioned that to connect with with audiences maybe new audiences also who are not uh, uh, so so much in the theater at the moment uh, for for instance youngsters we, we really need uh, we, we're looking for so I, I would suggest why couldn't we arrange uh, all together and supported by the EU such kind of uh, production houses in, in, in the Netherlands we had, we had uh, in, in the uh, decades before uh, uh, good experiences with that and that is especially not for those who are uh, on the academies but but in the first period after graduating uh, and it's also a way for Bridging the gap that is um, often uh, mentioned after after our uh, uh, educational uh, programs to professional uh, life, to to arrange um, a couple of those uh, more or less experimental collective uh, groups uh, on the basis of international co-creating, supported by uh, national and EU uh, funds, and. In my opinion, that they should be very should be connected at least with, with professional partners in the fields, uh, theaters, uh, uh, theater companies, uh, or, or maybe also in the background uh, we as as uh, educational uh, partners to to support them, to surround them because um, it, it's not well. It's the, to to make theater to bring it in 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 society. Is uh, is a profession uh, itself. So so some guidance uh, and, and connection with experienced people who are engaged with the idea is uh, important. I think. What do you think about such an idea? Who wants to answer? I, I'm afraid Barbara Gessler has left us. Would she? <laughs> I would have liked to hear what she says about it. Yeah, she'd yeah. Pro she'd probably say that there are programs you can use for this kind of postgraduate work. Uh, as we as we all know, uh, so maybe it's this is up to us to install and really get it going. Or what do you think? It really reminds me uh, to the French uh, structure. They have this uh, Jeune Théâtre National, uh, which uh, mm. invites automatically all the graduates from the different uh, acting schools of France, and and provide them with a sort of uh, safe place for for one or two years uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also works as a sort of agency in the best uh, sense of the term, which helps uh, young people to connect with, uh, with the professional, uh, with the uh, diverse network of, of theaters and also uh, not, not only uh, uh, pave, paves the way towards uh, uh, their engagement in, in those uh, structures, but also helps contribute financially. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, useful uh, uh, hub uh, where all the, the alumni of, uh, of, of actors or, or acting uh, uh, schools uh, can, can meet up. So I think it's a very uh, um, inspiring uh, uh, example that can be extended on, on, a, on, a, on a European level and with the very good uh, Dutch reference of the production houses, also I think it's mm -hmm. it's it's important to mm -hmm. uh, to give uh, resources for 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 creation for people who, who would be virtually not only virtually but physically also part of this uh, this network. Yeah, I, I'm afraid that 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 someone from the EU would say that go for the creative Europe and try to uh, <laughs> get money uh, from that. And this was also one of my problems, uh, uh, which we all know that, that this this only program that that was referenced at the opening speech as well as the only 
existing platform for for co-financing uh, at, at the European level is, is already highly competitive. So I, I'm what I witnessed the past uh, few years or, or decades that, that the chances for newcomers are uh, constantly decreasing. And I think that for the educational purposes, some kind of, of, of fast line or some kind of priority seating would be necessary because it's uh, it, there's more at stake than just yet another interesting uh, pan-European cultural project. But it's really about how those who were trained for uh, becoming the, the, the new generation of artists throughout the country can uh, experience and, 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 and co-create uh, new ways of, uh, of, of productions and, 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 and reflections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, Beata, you want to say something, right? Uh, Did just I... say what you wanted to say and then I will. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't interpret your, yeah. your finger. Um, um, I think this is one of the main things why um, I just wanted to make clear that all of us who are sitting here know very well about the di very diverse landscape of, uh, of fundings provided by the EU. So it's not a matter of just say, we want one more, we want one more. It really is a structural thing. We, we start to really talk about in all our you know, associations we are and, and, and in our networks. And it's not solved yet because the problem of um, or the idea of of, um, of postgraduate collaboration could be a very very valuable one to establish and enhance European co-working because um, um, and it we are we are always talking about um, who gives like a helping hand to start this and get the big elephants also the small ones but also the big big elephants. Uh, to move and to uh, think about possibilities of hosting, of giving venues, of uh, you know opening up to this idea, um, and maybe uh, uh, link it to maybe all ETC theaters who are listening to us now mm -hmm. say uh, think who who can who can host postgraduate work up to three years um, after they finish studies, and you will have something which is normal in medicine, you study medicine and then you go to the hospital and work there. And it's still part of your, part of your, academic, uh, of your academic career. And we badly need something uh, like, like this. Um, yeah. Beata. Uh, at first, I would like to say that uh, in our Q&A, there was a, a, a note from Kasia. Yes, I just saw it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, going back what, uh, to, to our former discussion is uh, and about this place for postgraduates. This is what we also were discussing a few times during our PLETA meetings because we knew that there are uh, artists or young artists just uh, who just graduated the studies who would like to develop, but the academy cannot get a responsibility for them anymore because we are just uh, uh, having students and uh, are not uh, taking care about postgraduates. So that's the first uh, uh, um, idea and it's very important and that would be crucial to make it. But still, we have to go back this one step lower and think about higher uh, uh, educational institutions like academies or universities because if we will not prepare students to think about it, they will not get and they will not go and they will not use this instrument. We still need to work here and find some solutions to encourage them to try to make this research because, well, they will just finish and they will go to the market they know. Absolutely. And we will, we will have to go back to, to, to this idea and elaborate it a little bit more. I just wanted to share with everyone what Kasia wrote. Uh, she wrote, it's great. Thank you so much very empowering to hear about the importance of experiments we don't know the outcomes of. I wonder how much for future we should experiment with multilingual theater making. Now, this is a very important key <clears throat> work. We, we didn't speak about it yet because it's, it's, a, it's a big domain everybody is trying to work in. And, and the theaters are more and more interested in productions that really use this multi-ethnic, multinational and multilingual um, uh, stories they tell because that's our reality and it should be reflected on stage. So it's, we better think about training, just simply training students in multilinguality because it will be part of the market if I just speak of this, of, of this, of this section. Yeah. Leo, did you want to add something or Mate to what Beata rightfully said? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, 
Sure, because uh, Beate, you are very right. If we don't uh, prepare our students during during uh, our programs at, at the academies, they won't uh, uh, go for an international uh, experiment afterwards. Uh, because uh, it's it's a hard way to to become an actor or director uh, in in um, only in the in the national uh, uh, market. You know, it's it's, it's not an easy way. Uh, uh, so for them, it's also something like yes, it's interesting to go abroad and to to step in in a, a multilingual. Uh, experiment, but if I can choose between an internship with a, a big uh, theater company and such a project, maybe I better go for the internship and and well see if if I can uh, uh, give such a, a pathway a better opportunities for me to 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 become a good actor, you know, and to 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 get a place in the market. So. In my opinion, there's a connection between the work we do in the curriculum uh, and the opportunities we should create afterwards, because that creates also a perspective for them during the, the training programs and the academic programs to, to make a, a further step in their first professional uh, uh, period to go to step in such a multilingual, a multicultural um, production house, something like that. And yes, language is, is a problem. So we can deny that. To, to, to make a beautiful uh, theater based on, on dramatic literature, language is very important. But if you jump over that barrier and you um, uh, want to make theater about uh, uh, personal and societal issues that are very actual, and you do that with with uh, uh, a company that is multicultural from itself, you have to 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 step into another kind of theater, which is multilingual, uh, multidiscipline more or less, yeah, you, you will use other theatrical idiom. And we discovered, like, like we did with the Poor Rich uh, project, we, we, we developed in, 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 uh, in Salzburg, uh, in, in the Plato program, that, that mixing all those languages works, works fabulous in, in the communication, even with the audience, you know? So, so there are lots of opportunities we should discover much more and further than those we are so familiar with and who are so close connected to the high standard of dramatic theater based on, on literature, dramatic literature. Exactly, that's the, that's, that's the aspect of a theater is not only text on legs, but has so many different forms as has been pointed out on several occasions already this morning. Um, I just look into the chat uh, from Kasha. It's also about an idea of failure as a creative opportunity, isn't it? She, Kasha is still uh, with uh, the, uh, the outcome you do not know about, no? Do I interpret this right, Beata? It's also about an idea of failure as a creative opportunity, is it? Multilingual, yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, exactly. we also we always say in our academy that the academy as a, uh, is a idea of a failure as a creative creative opportunity because here you are safe and you can make a mistake and well that's the place to make mistake okay i'm just yeah i really uh, wonder about this uh, this 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 language issue because um, of course we hear it very often that uh, using uh, English as a lingua franca, it's it's in itself quite a, a limitation for <laughs> most of us, for who is not the native language. And still, now we are sitting in a in a, in a panel where with four different mother tongues uh, and trying to express ourselves in in, in English, which which makes us, which also becomes a sort of a, 
limitations because we are using a, a toolkit which has been you know somehow appropriated and, and, and but but not not we are not in full possession of, of that so it, it's even more uh, relevant when when it comes to a, an, an educational uh, setting and and therefore I, I i also would would emphasize and thinking about what kashia um, uh, raises that that first of all it's, it's not what kind of of language we use to express ourselves uh, on the on the verbal aspect, but it's also uh, what uh, what what do we seek for uh, expressing? And I think that the the learning of the language, the learning of the background of the language, is is, is even more important. And this is what should institutions uh, prepare young people for. And this is also what uh, new uh, platforms should be proposed for them to experience it by themselves. Because when you move to another country. Of course, there is the there might be the language barrier, but it but it's also that 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 the the topics, the social context, the themes, the the codes, the behavioral aspects, are much more mysterious than the language itself. And in order to discover deeply and 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 and, and intim, intimately those uh, those uh, uh, those phenomena, which then should be somehow expressed by artistic means. And language is just one of these uh, these means uh, is, is 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 vital, and I think that that uh, that that the real challenge is how what what kind of uh, platforms are 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 there for young people to to really uh, dive into those uh, kind of, of of learning situations in contexts which are uh, of, of course on a European level we we like to say that that we 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 all. Uh, uh, are connected uh, in, in our culture, but in, in, in fact, in the reality, mm. the the, our, the realities are are very very diverse. Mm. And 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 when for an artist to to really understand it, it it, it should be a, a very deep uh, uh, ex experience. And also uh, for 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 young, young people who who has a, a pre. Uh, a previous experience through, through the media, I think it's sometimes, and it's also my experience with students, when you go there and when you meet people and when you work with them, it's shocking. It, it, it's shocking just, just the difference between the, the, the images that, that, that they've been preparing for themselves and, and the reality that they are, they are uh, encountering on mm -hmm. the spot. Maybe I have a, I have a question from uh, Sana. I don't know how to pronounce some is the Grundmain from the uh, who's watching us on live stream, um, which is a little connected to this. She asks, how would you imagine an integrated slash an equal selection process of practitioners to be able to work in those type of organizations as mentioned European co-production houses? If I understand this right, it's asking for who, who has access to this, no? Or how do you mix it? Or how would you select it? Right or not right? Would yeah. anybody like to Could answer? Uh, yeah. Well, how do we imagine it is uh, the access to these production houses? Well, we think about we think about not students, but uh, about uh, uh, the lecturers or the supervisors, yeah. I'm not quite sure. She says practitioners. Okay. Because uh, uh, the question about, of course, yeah. the question is one we, we didn't, uh, or I, I don't have it in my mind now, uh, is this production house uh, uh, only for those who are, uh, who are using it as a, as a production house? So do we have an artistic supervision on this? And there mm -hmm. is someone who is looking at it and maybe making some corrections or reflection which is needed all the time, yeah? So that's, that's one thing. Uh, well, my guess might be that, uh, uh, well, it should be some kind of, uh, 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 of uh, the, how to say, interview, let's say, and uh, uh, sharing the program or, pre or presenting the program of, uh, of the artist uh, who would like to, what, what kind of research would, would he like to or she uh, develop. 
But this is uh, a good point uh, about thinking, is this production house only a house for production or also mm -hmm. a place where we do a reflection on it and who is supervising it? Mm -hmm. Sunny said in between, yes, right. So we interpreted her question right, if I interpret her yes, right, right. <laughs> and gave, um, gave a hint to a, to a possible answer. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Beata. I'd, I'd like to, to do, maybe we have to speak about two models we have in our minds, which have to do with uh, international co-working also on the EU, EU level. Um, so uh, was it again to this question, Leo? Because otherwise I would... Um, I, I, I only wanted to, to uh, adjust to Beata that uh, we, we have also experience in Plato with this uh, selection thing. To, uh, so, so it's very important that, that those who are interested apply themselves, that there is a um, uh, kind of artistic uh, um, uh, advisement uh, uh, who can um, select the, those who apply on on um, their uh, motivation and their own initiatives and ideas about the framework for such a project. Mm -hmm. And I do agree very much, it's not uh, this, this kind of production house, it's, it's not production, uh, uh, it's not only focused on production, it's very much focused on the combination of development research and production and find uh, and create new connections with audiences uh, because what kind of production house it, it will be, uh, and I very much hope it will be international, so at least you, you, you want to bring in four, five, six uh, different uh, backgrounds uh, in, in such a group, uh, but, but maybe better eight like we did with Plata, because that was a rule also, at least uh, from every academy one should participate, so that's very important to, to, to make such very basic lines, but, but then again, um, to to if you want to to work with such kind of models, you have to create also free space in in uh, the field of European funding, and, and then at the moment, if you apply at the European funds, you have to be very specific about the outcomes of your project, even the output and how that will be uh, uh, installed in 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 the profession. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And well, I can I can imagine that that, that that there are good reasons to do so. But we now need some more space in those uh, regulations of the EU, EU funds for these kinds these kinds of uh, experiments and and uh, international uh, co-creation. And uh, uh, I would say we need it now, like the the title of our workshop is. Before I pass the word on to Mate, who is busy developing a very specific idea uh, linked to the situation in Budapest, uh, I would like to add, leave my role as moderator for a moment and just report from uh, one uh, topic. Apart from the uh, postgraduate work we are busy with in the EUZA among our 18 members. Um, and that's the idea of, um, of a, something like a European theater master. I'm going back to the idea of free the curriculum and put things in there which are necessarily linked to the studies or can be linked if you wish in a master program. So make your art, your artistic, your artisanal work. And then it would be great if we could develop with a couple of universities a model of really mixing curricula, not only in the way that students can, as other sciences can, go abroad and take courses in this or that university, you can already do this, but that you can choose a formation on your master program where you have to co-create with other students in other universities, let it be the three countries you always need for this, that, you, um, that you, you study there, you work there, you establish a project and you show a project which is participate in which at least three, uh, three, uh, three uh, nations, three other countries, students are participating and this will be your master work. And this is something you will not, as far as I can see it, you will not get done uh, uh, from, the, from the universities. 
they, uh, we won't be, uh, I can, if I speak of my university, even if they are willing to, they will neither have the money nor the facilities to say, we just establish uh, a kind of test master for a couple of years together with other universities because uh, the means are just uh, used up and will be used up even more after lockdown. So I'm afraid all these plans will rather go down than come up because we already have the first cuts announced in our university. Uh, so this would be something if we could like make a, I don't know, make a kind of initiative group for a European theater master. Uh, and ask uh, universities to join and, and develop this. This would be a real great help because again, it's a spark. It starts somewhere, you can evaluate it and then maybe others will join in and we really create a new form of curriculum for our practitioners, for our young future artists. This is something I would very much like to drop and emphasize um, and maybe go on talking about this with some of the policymakers because we really strongly believe in the value of an idea like this. That was uh, my content part from the EUZA. And uh, Mate, would you like to say something about the idea you develop in Budapest right now? Yeah, thank you. And you're absolutely right, Regina, that, that, that we are facing difficult times uh, and um, and uh, but I, I also would uh, hope and 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 claim that this whole recovery process that that we are also ahead and 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 in which uh, arts and education should play a, a vital role not only because it was very badly affected by all these uh, 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 restrictions but also because uh, because we 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 will enter and we have to enter in, into a healing process. Uh, where where lots of bounds uh, should be uh, uh, treated carefully, and in that that perspective, arts and culture and education is really a very very important tool. Uh, so I, I also would like to see uh, this 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 upcoming period as as uh, as, as a chance to 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 really come up with uh, meaningful ideas and 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 get funds. Uh, for for that from the the huge uh, EU budgets which uh, which uh, were announced uh, uh, earlier, um, and uh, and I know that those kind of European projects and international cooperations between big institutions it always takes time and it's all always meticulously prepared and it's, these are long term processes. But exactly because we are going through different uh, crises, uh, this is also an opportunity for us to think. And act quickly, and 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 use these uh, accidents or use these unprecedented moments as as a source of uh, source of inspiration and also build building up uh, uh, quick quick structures which sometimes are more resistant than uh, than 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 uh, uh, those which were pre mediated for uh, for for a long time. So yes, we are we are in Budapest in a in a in a full crisis situation. We are facing a, a moment when, when when the new leadership, uh, the new ownership of the, the the university announced that basically they 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 close down the university and they don't acknowledge the the current educational scheme. So even this semester is invalid for everyone who is in the university, and they will open from first of February February new places of learning with new teaching staff, and 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 students and and teachers will uh, uh, call one by one to 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 say whether they would like to join and acknowledge the new uh, setup or not. And you can imagine that for the hundreds of, of teachers and students who have been protesting so harshly, this is really not an option. So they found themselves in a situation where for, for, uh, for uh, February and, and for the next uh, school year, they have to find an alternative solution. And what can be an alternative solution? Of course, uh, uh, we can move out and, 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 uh, and, 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 and meet in, 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 in different places. And, and keep on working together. So the professional development in a way could be assured, but, but by the end of the day, there will be no diploma for sure, because we, we cannot uh, 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 distribute diploma uh, without uh, the, the state recognition. And that's how the, the international solidarity, which is not only a gesture, but, but a, a concrete, which can translate into concrete terms, come into the picture, because in Hungary for the coming years, 
if you don't want to cope with that kind of institution, which is uh, clearly taken over by the by the politics, uh, uh, and there is no alternative ways, we have a monopole situation in, uh, in, in, in Hungary, so only one theater school exists. Uh, so the choice is very clear, clear for young generations, either they cope with that, uh, that uh, structure mm -hmm. or they try to go somewhere else abroad. So what we would propose that, 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 that the international community should somehow come into the country and create a new framework of a sort of international European University of Performing Arts with a special affiliate in, in, in Budapest in which uh, uh, Hungarian students and, and teachers can keep on working along with international peers because Budapest is of course a fantastic place to to study at and and and, and live at and it's really uh, at the center of, of of the continent so why not use it in a in a in a positive way but it would need a sort of administrative umbrella uh, which which is developed by by those entities who are able and capable uh, uh, to do so and if the EU as such is too big and too slow to move in that direction I think that the, the, the responsibility may uh, uh, lay with the institutions uh, themselves and, and they should explore among themselves and together with us whether there is any kind of possibility uh, to set up that kind of, of, of network and whether this network can then um, successfully apply for additional uh, funds uh, on the European level. Mm. But this is, <laughs> this is really the, the only chance if it doesn't happen uh, and that's why we are working so hard with, with Christoph, uh, who is in this panel from Salzburg and, and some other uh, other colleagues, whether we can do something very quickly, because if it doesn't happen, it's just, uh, it's just over and this whole uh, situation is, is, is shrinking and there, there just will be one, one lesson uh, on, on all that, uh, that, that you will have a new University of Theatre of Film Arts with the old name, but with a truly new content. And, uh, and I would just warn, to be very cautious entering into any kind of international cooperation with. with them. Thank you very, thank you very much, Marti. Um, uh, this is like, is like, on the one hand, it sounds like utopia, because you you have the, the you have the vision of uh, just moving out into the into the empty Soros building <laughs> with the the IGH, the, the the European courts, um, you know said that it was illegal to, uh, to, to, to empty this university. But on the other hand, um, you see that solidarity action can be very fast, even with the elephants, because uh, the people who are moving at the moment, including my university and others and all EUTSA universities and uh, are calling and saying, do you need help? Can we check the curricula? Can we give diploma? How can we give diploma to your students? Of course, in an absolutely legal way, as you do it with in Erasmus context, contexts, um, uh, checking the ETCS points and all this. So it can be done quickly if the necessity is there. So I think Budapest at the moment is a very good example for as well, do another curricula as you're used to and look for a kind of international university of performing arts, which can be set up provisionally but it can be set up if everybody uh, uh, agrees to, to, to invest into it and, and put their uh, logistics and their teachers and their facilities in there. It can be done. It's not that far away. And I hope we are going to prove as a, also as a community of theater schools that this is a possibility uh, to go. Uh, and I, I really see it. Yeah. Anybody who wants to... Yes, Beata, please. So it's still about preparing our students to make this international relations because it may happen. Our reaction of as we are here and our universities it is because we are working together in EU in Plata and we have these relations. Without those relations, would not be this discussion mm -hmm. and uh, finding any issues and any sol uh, uh, solvings for uh, for Budapest situation and students. So that's why still we have to go back and really enhancing this international relations between students and academies. Beata, this was the best closing word <laughs> I could imagine <laughs> For, for, for our panel, we have another three minutes, uh, three minutes left. Um, uh, Mati, you, 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 you breathed, uh, you wanted to say something? On top, no, it's fine. Um, because then I would, I, would like, I would like to close this session. I'm just looking briefly if there are other 
if there is anything from the um, excuse me I'm just not used to doing it like this as much it's, it's my first no questions thank you very much Alice <laughs> I'm really dependent on these tools okay could have gone worse um, uh, I'm closing but I want to uh, uh, I want to say to everybody who's uh, still watching and listening that um, for the forum um, if we want to continue, if you want to continue uh, discussions with us who are here, and I'm talking to the forum guests, guest list participants um, who are currently with us, you're welcome to, to continue this discussion um, in, the, in the platform on the stage within the auditorium later on. Uh, there you have an opportunity to meet and talk face to face um, about the topic we've been discussing this, this morning. Um, but first, we invite you all to go to the feedback plenary where you can hear what has been discussed in the two other panels parallel um, to ours, to our session uh, on the working conditions of artists and on the accessibility and diversity of the performing arts. Thank you very much and see you later. We go into a short break. <laughs>